Hi, I'm Mark. I'm here with Brett. And today we're going to show you a short demo of our DDR4 3 Phi. We're going to plug in a whole bunch of different DIMMs, uh, UDIMMs, RDIMMs, and LRDIMMs, and 3DS DIMMs, and show you our DDR4 3 Phi programming and training those DIMMs. So, Brett, please take it away. Show us the DIMMs. All right, absolutely. Let's go over and take a look at the demo. What we have here is our, our test board for our internal testing and characterization. Uh, I have my test chip here underneath our socket. It's a 32 bits test chip. Uh, we have a number of different DIMMs, and I have a number of UDIMMs. I have some RDIM, some LRDIM, a 3D stack DIMM, and I have a couple really neat DIMMs that we have modified ourselves to be able to show how we can use a shared AC environment, a shared AC system. So as you can see on these DIMMs, I have population on part of them and not on the other side. And that's a really neat feature of our FI, so we'll get into that later as well. What I want to do though is start off and just show you, as, as Mark said, this is our 3200 megabit solution. So I'm going to take a, a DIMM here. It's, a, it's probably got some 2400 devices underneath it that have been speed binned, uh, and it's now rated 2800 by the DIMM manufacturer. So we'll just pop this guy in. Turn on our board, and we'll run him. So we'll start off uh, something really simple and basic. We'll start off just running at uh, 2400 megahertz, or 2400 data rate. Okay, and we can see everything is trained up nicely. And we can take a look at a data eye and see what it looks like here running at 2400, which again is the likely rated speed of the DIMMs underneath the hood. And you can see I have a really nice data eye. And the neat thing about this data eye is this is taken actually at the capture flops inside the PHY. So it's different than the nice pretty data eye pictures you typically see off of a scope. Uh, those are interesting, but somewhat irrelevant because those are taken at the board. This is what the PHY actually sees and is able to capture. And as you can see, it's a really nice wide data eye. I have a lot, I have a lot of range in terms of time steps and I have a good voltage reference range as well. Now again, that's a 2400, but you came to see something more exciting. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna speed this guy up to the max speed of DDR4 3200 data rate. And this is a 2800 rated DIMM by the manufacturer, right? That is correct, yes. So I'm overclocking the devices, I'm overclocking the DIMM. And by the way, when I'm doing this overclocking, I'm still running at nominal voltage. Everything you see here is running simply at 1.2 volts. So here's my 3200 data eye. Again, you can see I have a very nice margin all the way around the center of the eye. Very, very pretty eye. One of the nice things about our phi is the way that it trains. It uses firmware-based training, so it doesn't really matter what you give to it, it can figure out how to train almost anything. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of a comparison for you guys just to see some neat things. So I'm gonna run this down a little bit slower. We'll run it at 2667. And again, you can see successful training. And I'll get a data eye at 2667. So here you can see a really nice data. I'm gonna push this off to the side just for a minute. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make the environment a little more difficult to operate in. So what I'm gonna do is just, just take my channel quality and, and drop it down just a little bit. So you've got what, three, uh, three, rise, three dim risers there? Yep, three dim risers. We're just gonna stick in the middle of the channel just for fun. So there's going to be a reflection at the 90 degree turn on the PCB. There's going to be a reflection at every one of those sockets all the way up to the uh, all the way up to the dim. Yeah, this is less than ideal for sure. Absolutely. Right? But the nice thing is again because everything, the way the phi handles everything, it uh, it can make sure we still can find a data eye to train and to run at, assuming one exists. So let's see what our data eye looks like with this uh, with these extra risers stuck in there. See, that's still a pretty nice data eye. I've still got a large number of tap points, and I've still got a good plus 10, minus 10% on my voltage, on my VREF. And now let's just take a look at these guys together. You can see I definitely did lose some of the eye, but I still have a, a very large eye left to play with. And still running nominal voltage on this, right? Still running nominal voltage, yes. You won't see me mess with any voltage on this board whatsoever. 1.2 volts across the board. Certainly we could, uh, we could improve things by jacking up the voltage, but we don't want to do that. Now, if you want to talk about something that's a little bit less than ideal, what do you think about this guy? 
Yeah, I was looking at that earlier. That's a really interesting thing. So it looks like what you've got is an SO dim to U dim adapter card there. That's right. That's exactly what we have. So this guy here uh, on the package, he is rated at 2400. So let's just see what happens with this guy. Let's see what his eyes look like. We'll drop him in and we'll run him first at 2400. Let's just make sure that he in fact can be trained at that data rate. Okay, everything looks really good. Once again, we'll pick up a data eye just to, to look at. That's, Very nice. That's a nice looking data eye. So that, that's an example of what we could achieve with a challenging PCB envir environment, for example. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know what, speaking of challenging, just for fun, you know what, let's do the same thing that we just did with the other down. And let's see what happens if we add a little bit more onto this guy. It's always fun to show what you can do under ideal condition, but it's really interesting to show what you can do with a little bit of adversity. So we've now got the transmission line between the PHY, through the package, through that uh, socket adapter that we have there, out onto the PCB, doing a 90 degree turn through a socket, up through three le other levels of riser card, and then into this adapter card, which is then going onto an, uh, uh, an SO dim, which has got a different impedance from a regular U dim. And how's it looking? It looks really nice, Mark. We still have a wonderful data eye. We still have a lot of tap points. I know this is gonna be a little hard to see on the camera, but I got at least 10, probably more like 15 tap points, and I still have a good plus minus 10% on my uh, reference voltage here that I can play with. Now let's just look at these eyes side by side. Again, here's our, uh, I hesitate to call it ideal, given the, uh, the particular configuration we started with, but starting, comparing our starting and our finishing, uh, we still have a really nice data eye, a lot of margin around that. So one of the things that I really like is this guy right here. This is a 3D stack dim. He's a 2133 rated. Mm -hmm. So it's a... And that's a 64 gigabyte dim, right? That's right. He is 64 gigabytes. All right. We have a lot of our server customers really interested in uh, using that type of dim. So they're, they're always asking us, uh, you know, can we use 3D devices uh, with, the, uh, with this buy? And the answer is, well, we're going to see in a second. Absolutely. I just need to update a few things in my program to let the FI know that I've got a new type of device. And let's see what we can do. And he was a 2133, right? So let's run him at 2133. Okay, we were successfully able to train. And let's do our usual thing, pick up some data eyes, see what they look like. Oh, that's great. That's beautiful. That is really beautiful. I like that quite a bit. Now, of course, just for fun, let's see if we can go a little bit higher. Let's see if we can push him to 2400. Now overclocking about 10% on this, right? Yes. Still nominal voltage. Absolutely. Still looks great. Still have very nice data on it. Very nice indeed. And this is our LR DIM. And this guy is a uh, 2667 LR DIM. You can see our buffer chips all along the bottom there. Yeah. What's his capacity? This is also 64 gigabytes. 64 gig. Okay. Yeah. So there we are. Nice, nicely trained again. 2667. Let's take a look at our data eye. Looks great. Looks great again. Absolutely. So as you can see, we're able to train basically all the types of DIMMs that you're going to encounter out there. We've done the SO DIMM, we've done the U DIMMs, we've done R DIMM, 3DS, and now we've done an LR DIMM. And we've shown a little bit of, uh, of uh, the ability to handle adversity by throwing in some extra risers just, just for fun. So that pretty much wraps up our demonstration on our DDR4 3 training with different various DIMMs, U DIMMs, R DIMMs, LR DIMMs, 3DS DIMMs. 
So I'll hand it over to you, Mark. Yeah, well, thank you. That's been really interesting. I'm excited to see all those dims that we can train, and I'll look forward to the next couple of videos where we show the temperature testing of the uh, of the Phi, mm -hmm. as well as the manufacturing test of our DDR4 3 Phi. And we would invite you to look at all these videos and other videos about Designware IP at synopsis.com. Bye. Bye. Bye.